Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Thanks for joining me today. We're coming to you from the Believe in Music Week event at NAM, and uh, I've got some very special guests and some really fun things to talk about today. We've got Cesar and JC from Gibson, and we've got Randall from Mesa Boogie joining us. Great to have you guys here. Great to be here. Thanks, Mitch. I know you guys are busy, so we appreciate you taking time. No problem. So earlier this year, I guess which is just the last couple of weeks, pretty major announcement came out of the, uh, the Gibson Mesa Boogie World. Uh, tell us a little bit about what, uh, what happened. What are, we, what are we here talking about today? Well, I think we're talking about the, the journey that we've all been on and way before our time, you know, and certainly Randall can talk to his, uh, his storied past, president, and hopefully the future. But for Gibson, it has started over 100 years ago in this sort of quest for inspiring and supporting and contributing to sound for for artists everywhere. And then uh, in the last few years, we've been rebuilding Gibson with all of our brands and we've been trying to find ways to connect with, uh, with you know, all of our artists and our fans with guitars. And we realized that we could take it so far with our guitars and we started talking about strings and picks and straps and all the things that would help shape sound. But we realized one thing was missing and that was the, a, a way to amplify the amazing sound of our guitars. And we said, who would be the absolute ideal partner in our wildest imagination and then enter says our conversations with the team. And uh, we've been massive fans of Mesa Boogie for the years and then says our connected. So over to you, Cesar, to tell the next step and then maybe Randy can finish it up. Well, well I, I, I think this is an epic combination of, you know, the shape of sound with a home of tone. And from my perspective, you know, this started a couple of months ago when we engaged in, in conversations with Randy and the team. And I asked JC, hey, JC, if we dare to dream, yes, we can go into building amplifiers again. Like there's a very big history of Gibson amps. But if we really dare to dream, who could we really combine with that is crafted? It's got an attention to quality. It's been shaping sound for now decades and generations. It's made in America just like we are. And it's obsessed, obsessed with products and we came up with it's gotta be Mr. Boogie and I told JC let, let's let's engage with Randy and the team and here we are now coming together. Well what I like about it too is that it it before any business concepts were even floated there was a friendship uh, between our guy, Steve Mueller, and you, Cesar, where you guys were just like a couple of tone junkies. Ooh, you got to check out these new guitars we're making, Steve. Let me let me send you a, a Les Paul. Let me send you a 330. And, and meanwhile, Jay, uh, uh, Cesar, you're also saying, uh, yeah, but hey, yeah. help me help me get get add to my Mesa Boogie collection here. And oh yeah, you got to try the Badlander. Let me send you a Badland. And so from that, then uh, <clears throat> the next thing was, uh, Steve, you think uh, Mesa Boogie might like to build some amplifiers for Gibson? And this is when he started telling me about you guys and how you turned the ship around and dedicated to quality. I said, that's really interesting, but uh, you know, we're not able to keep up quite with a Mesa Boogie production. And Heck, we make Mesa Boogie amps. We don't build Gibson amps. And uh, then, then Cesar, you came over and we hung out. And um, the only sad thing was we were watching the sunset from my deck after that epic uh, 12,000 strike lightning storm. And geez, if we couldn't see fire starting off in the horizon. So uh, meanwhile, we're getting to know each other. Then it's like, oh, man, look at that. Look at the smoke coming. For, oh, you can see the flames over there. It was kind of terrible. But uh, yeah. that aside, yeah, I mean, we, we, we hit it off because, again, we're, I think, kindred spirits to just love the gear, love the music, and uh, that's the passion here. Yeah, and Steve, and I, right. when we were doing all of this, we would sign off on our texts and emails, uh, Tone Brother. Like every, yeah. <laughs> every email and text back and forth was like, hi, my Tone Brother. And then at the end, I would sign Tone Brother and he would do the same thing. And, and yes, I, over the last two plus years, I've, I've you know, purchased multiple Mesa Boogies. With, I think they, they, they've been on to just an amazing journey of innovation, quality. Um, I love the way that they are built. You know, Randy always says they do the hammer test and that they're really built to last forever. And Gibson guitars are, are by definition built to last forever. So I, I think the synergy is just everywhere you look, whether it's in the products and the quality and the way we work in the way that we connect with our artists and our partners, uh, we both had 
followed the same approach. And so it made it made a lot of sense to come together. Talk to others. Right, right. Like it's yeah. Yeah, it's 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 super exciting. I mean, uh, Gibson and Mesa Boogie are both tremendous partners with Sweetwater, and and, uh, and uh, so we were very interested to talk to you and get the word straight from the the people who were involved because obviously there's a lot of stuff going on on the internet, and there's been some some history behind there. And I'd like for you guys, if you would, to kind of address this whole resurgence of Gibson and how that factors into working with Mesa Boogie and the confidence that I feel that really instills in, in what's happening with the partnership of the two companies. Yeah, well, I mean, I think the story's been told several times and we don't have to start back in in 127 years ago, but just a couple of years ago, in fact, just over two, two and a bit years ago, um, we embarked on a new journey for Gibson. And, uh, you know, when we heard about this obstacle course Gibson had found itself on, we recognized there was a chance to actually take it from this obstacle course that was on into an opportunity course. And everything was there for us. The ingredients were there. The, the iconic brand was there. Fans wanted more. They wanted to say, hey, Gibson, can you go back to doing what made you famous in the first place was make amazing guitars from that era that everyone talks about and knows about. But at the same thing, there was this expectation that there was still more to do, more innovation to be had, and more music to create through the lens of Gibson, Epiphone, Kramer. And so... We took on this journey, and uh, and in the last two years, uh, I don't think we would have imagined, let alone you know, all of our stakeholders. I think some of you at Sweetwater, when I went there, we could talk about that in a second. Uh, but I, I don't think we could have imagined where we are today. You know, poised to uh, to set those conditions for success, as we like to say, from a business side, none of us can predict the future. We can't guarantee success, but what we should be able to guarantee as leaders of our of our uh, iconic brands is that we can set the best conditions for success. We focus and got obsessed with quality. We invested in our factories. We invested in, in capacity. We we recrafted the story of our brands to actually tell the most authentic story in music, which is starts with Gibson. And then we we set about uh, reconnecting with all of our partners, like you at Sweetwater. We uh, we flew up there to Fort Wayne, and what an amazing experience! And I thought, wow, we've got to now not just catch up to where the industry is, but we've got to start thinking about leading again. And, and I think this last um, sort of addition and this connection and this friendship and this opportunity with Mesa Boogie is just a testament to the progress we've made, but it also shows that we're not done yet. Right. I, I love it. It's so, it's so exciting and it's been fun to watch the last two years and to, to see the amazing instruments that are coming in is just is just astounding to to watch. And I, I know uh, Randall knows I, I started out with a, a Mark II B back in, in the back in the day it was my first good amplifier that I had, if you put it that way. And I have three Mesa Boogies now and I guess I have four or so Gibsons that I'm that I'm uh, that I'm playing. And so I'm a huge fan of both brands. And I think it's just so exciting that the two of you have come together and I'm, I'm interested to hear what you think this means as far as, as the future? Where will things go? Is Mesa Boogie going to stay the same? Will it be a separate entity? Or are they, is there going to be more synergy between the two companies? Or what's happening there? Yeah, well, see, this is the best part about it, is that Mesa Boogie is going to remain unchanged. The same crew, exactly. And these are people that have been working for 20, 30, and 40 years. We have number, a handful of people that have got 40 years plus there. That was part of my motivation, too. I'm 75 years old, and, uh, you know, as much as I'd like to live another 25 or 30 years uh, and continue designing amps, um, I needed to somehow be able to repay the dedication and allegiance of all of the people at the factory. And the best way is to... <laughs> to see that when I'm gone, there will still be Mesa Boogie pretty much the way it has been. And while I'm still here, it will be exactly the way it has been. This was one of the things that was interesting uh, about talking with Cesar and uh, JC about it is, uh, look, we love Mesa Boogie the way it is. We have no intention to come in and do any kind of changes. Uh, so just continue doing what you're doing. And that is, I'm semi-retired, but I'm still the chief designer which is my art. I, you know, I wouldn't quit doing this any more than I would quit playing music myself because it's, it's really a big part of my DNA and my identity. So, but at the same time, Mesa Boogie has remained small and we can see the virtues, the benefits all around to, to having Gibson's outreach and their distribution capabilities, for example, around the world uh, so that we can get our amplifiers out to a wider audience at 
<laughs> hopefully and avoiding some of the costs of distribution and warehousing and all of the, uh, you know, the markups that go between us as the manufacturer and the ultimate player. Uh, also, Gibson, <laughs> the most respected brand. I can't think of any other brand that we would have even considered an alliance with uh, including the former Gibson, but the current Gibson is, as you know, it's it's back to the roots, and that's well, that's what we've never left, and we aren't going to leave. So, be assured, everything in Petaluma and Mesa Boogie remains unchanged. Yeah, and I can echo that. Awesome. It's a, it's one thing to talk about iconic brands coming together, and then you know the Tone Brothers connecting, and and the genuine like, friendship that we've all just created over the last couple of weeks, months, and, and year. But but when uh, we had a chance to go to Petaluma, it just felt right. I mean, we we have as, as, as much as we've done, we still have our custom shop here in Nashville. We have our amazing acoustic facility in Bozeman. And it just felt like another amazing extension of that, you know, craftsmen and craftswomen really understanding it uh, and what they what they've been doing, but more importantly, what they could do with a new partner. And, uh, and I can tell you, our team is super excited about it. Um, I love it when we go to Petaluma and they refer to the, the, the individual that's been there for only 23 years as the new guy. So we immediately <laughs> understood that, that not just from a brand fit and a business fit, from a, from a culture fit, it just feels right. Yeah. And it feels good. And, and I got to say, Randy's just done an amazing job of, of setting the stage and making sure that everyone understood his rationale, which uh, which is right there for everyone to see and hear. And we're going to be those custodians of the Mesa Boogie brand going forward. And, and Cesar can talk a little bit about that and, and the artist energy and, and what's happening on that side, too. It's a custom shop. When you go when you go to Petaluma and you enter that factory, it's magical. It's like our custom shop in Nashville. It's it's an amazing parallel. And we're going to really celebrate that. We're going to we're going to celebrate that. We're going to pay tribute to what Randy and the team have done there in Petaluma. We're also, JC and I always talk about it, and we talk about it with the rest of the team. we got to be really good stewards of the future of this new chapter of Mesa Boogie, and we take that very, very seriously. And what a great situation was the moment that we announced this, that a lot of the artist community started reaching out to us saying, this is epic. Wow, epic, like everybody from different genres of music, from icons and legendary artists to young generations of artists reaching out to us saying, wow, this is really epic. Well, here's another thing, That's too, funny. is that uh, every one of the people in your organization has been professional, funny, down to earth, people that you feel immediate friendship with. And, and the other thing that blew my mind is they're all Mesa Boogie fans already. I'm not hearing a guy, well, you know, uh, I'm, 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 I'm a dedicated mm, player and, you know, I, I always will be. No, what I keep hearing, even from this lady that you, uh, that you had drop in on us to do a little bit of the coordination of just the uh, administrative side, she was wonderful. And when she said this, I, I knew we were into some epic territory. She said... Oh, yeah, well, you know, I was just so bummed. The thing that upset me the most was when my husband's Mark V was stolen in Budapest, Hungary. And I thought, really? She said, oh, oh, my husband loved that amp. You know, and, well, <laughs> it was like, really? Here's this lady. I thought this is like an accounting kind of administrative person. And, and Mesa Boogie, she was already plugged in. She knows you guys, of course. Uh, but the fact that she already had a connection with us it's just like, th these are just wonderful indications as things progress. Yeah. Right. That's awesome. That's awesome. So one would also have to imagine that with the, the Gibson creative artistry side, the Mesa Boogie creative artistry side, is there going to be back and forth between, between the two? Are we going to see Gibson amplifiers? Are we going to see specific Mesa Boogie amps aimed at, at things? Or, or what, could, what hints can you give us? Who do you want me to answer that? Um, yeah, we're 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 continuing both. The answer, the short answer is both. The short answer is both. I'm already looking into uh, coming up with some recreations of some of Gibson amps greatest hits. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, shouldn't be real difficult. And of course, Mesa Boogie, we never stop. 
and um, we've got products in various stages of development uh, that will be coming out in due time when they're ready, but they've, they've been in planned and in the works long before this um, collaboration even existed. So as I keep saying, we're doing everything the same as we always had, but we've got added energy and impetus right now. The artist outreach that you mentioned, that's far beyond what our capabilities with artists have always been. So it's exciting. We're, 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 we're totally up for it. Yeah, we have a very, very big artist community that got very excited. We spoke with them, with some of them, um, a little bit on the front side before this got announced. And then a lot of the artist community started reaching out because there is so much love out there for Mesa Boogie that I, that yes, I mean, you're going to see us now starting to plan and create a roadmap for artist collaborations. And then we've got Randy, we've got Doc Emmett Brown, the mad scientist who can <laughs> basically build now <laughs> the next evolution of what is going to be Gibson amplifiers in the future. You know, the priority right now is Mesa Boogie with an amazing roadmap, pretty robust of product development, and, and that's the priority. But while we're doing that, you know, Randy's already playing around with creating the new concepts for future Gibson amplifiers. Yeah. Right, right. I, yeah, I have to admit, yeah. the first thing that pop, popped into my mind was, uh, man, I bet I could get a Les Paul where the flame maple on the top matched the flame maple on the Mesa Boogie amplifier, and it was like this match set that was just gorgeous. And I was, that was the first thing that popped into my head. was like, wow, that would be really cool. That, that <laughs> that, that, Mitch, that, that's how it happens, honestly. I think uh, if you look at our journey, it's about listening to the artists. It's about about going back to what really worked in the past and, and perfecting and, and making sure you're paying tribute to that, but it's also, you know, the question we all get asked is, hey, you know, Gibson, whatever you do, go back to what made you famous and original, but what's next? What's new? Oh, and by the way, I can't right. wait. I know you guys are going to do amps one day. And so that day is now here, but I think we've learned to also pace ourselves and we've got so much opportunity short, mid and long term on this, this new combination that we're just going to take our time and do what we believe is right for music, for artists and and quite frankly, for our respective teams and business. Right. Yeah, right. That's Mitch, awesome. to your point, yeah. that, that was interesting, because I know that uh, the new Gibson has an opportunity for, for players to select their, the wood in their guitar, and so do we. Again, not that many people come up and visit our factory. And, and when they do, they all say, wow, that's a semi-religious experience. I had no idea it was like that. <laughs> but we'll take them over to the wood warehouse if, if they're looking for a hardwood cabinet and literally let them select the boards that they want their cabinet made out of. Right. Wow, that's, that's so amazing. That's so wonderful. So any final thoughts before we wrap things up today? Yeah, I, I would. I do want to say, I do want to touch on, on your world, Mitch, and the whole team at Sweetwater. And, and uh, you know, apart from everything you've just heard, uh, one of the common denominators that we also put on the table was both our appreciation and, quite frankly, our affection for Sweetwater as a partner, but also what, what Sweetwater's built with their fan base. And so, you know, when when... We started talking about business opportunities. You should know that uh, Sweetwater was the very first was the very first partner what we put on the table, and we were just excited to see that we the three of us, including you, um, had a partnership not in the making, but a really solid partnership earned the right way. So I look forward to what we can do all of us together, Messaboogie, Gibson, and Sweetwater in the future, and. And maybe some of your fans will come up with some ideas for us that we can take into consideration for the future. So just want to give a big shout out to everyone at Sweetwater for uh, for joining us on this journey and this new epic chapter we're about to open up. Oh, that's awesome. Thank oh, that's you. awesome. Did, Thank you for all that. Appreciate ditto it. Ditto from Mesa Boogie, too. You guys are very important for us. And I know when we've been back to visit, uh, the professionalism at Sweetwater is overwhelming. It's It's really a delight to see. So thank you on behalf of all of us, too. Well, we, we appreciate that as well. It's, it's just a, a pleasure to work with all you guys and uh, those iconic brands and those amazing instruments. And what I love is that you feel safe that the brands are in the hands of musicians because all three of you guys are players and you're actually uh, using this gear and, and out there uh, you know, uh, in the real world. If, if you will, and, and I love that, that, uh, that there's actually music behind it all. So I think that means That's a lot. Right. Absolutely, and, and, uh, and the three of us have agreed that we're gonna put the noise cancellation headphones on and just do what we do best, and, uh, and we're excited about the future. So thanks for <laughs> taking the time. 
Right on. You bet. Thank Thank you, you guys. uh, Pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for having us. Thanks, Mitch. Absolutely. Absolutely. My pleasure. All right. Great to see you guys. Take care, and uh, we'll talk soon. Awesome. And thank you for joining me here. We're so happy we had this opportunity to sit down with Gibson and Mesa Boogie to talk about the exciting merger of the two companies. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. (laughs) 